Have you started a painting that you thought was going to turn out super amazing and halfway through or all the way at the end you realize you really just hated it? So today I want to share with you some tips on how I'm going to be fixing my own painting and how you could hopefully fix yours as well. So if you got a painting that you really hate, that you think is really ugly, go ahead and take it out and let's see if we can make it all better. The first thing that you want to think about when you're looking at your painting is what materials did you use to paint it? In my case, I used acrylics. So the great thing about acrylics is that you can layer things on and it won't, it won't show through. I'm gonna basically redesign this whole thing. We're not going to be priming it or painting it black or any of that. We're going to leave the history of the painting in the back. I'm just gonna give it some character. What I'm going to do now is just use this holder. This is like for a cup that I have laying around. To create all of my lines, you can use your ruler as well. It doesn't matter what you use to make your lines. Any <laughs> Anything with a straight edge will have the same effect. So never feel limited by the materials that you have. It's okay to be an artist and be on a budget. Now, because I'm going for a fragmented look, I'm going to just make everything sharp around the shapes I already drew. Again, this is just an artistic style. So go with whatever you're doing. So if you're doing something that's more kawaii and bubbly, it's okay. Just fix the shape to what you think it should be. As you're redesigning, you want to start off with whatever you feel the most comfortable with. So initially, I felt most comfortable with my background, so that's why I started doing the lines first. And once I got comfortable with more or less where the lines are located, then I started diving into the cat. Just remember that this time with your pencil, it's a time for you to fix whatever you don't like about it. So we're going to move up this cat tail and finish breaking this up so that it makes more sense with all of the different colors that I have along all of the edges. Take whatever element you like from your original painting and then implement it on your new one. The reason why I think it's important for you to choose something that you liked from your original one is because you never want to erase that history that you're, you kind of had, right? Because when you started that painting, you were full of hope and illusion and you wanted it to come out well and you had something that you really wanted to accomplish. And there must be at least one thing from your painting, from your original one, that you want to keep. So look for that inspiration. Look for that one thing that you can, uh, you can feel proud of for your original one and then highlight it. Because I have all types of different colors going on, what I want to do is actually do like a small, like do some light sketching. So I'm just adding some crisscross marks all around the areas that are gonna be dark colored. So what I would suggest is that if you also have a section that you know is gonna be dark, so I'm talking like dark browns, blacks, navy blues, anything like that, then go ahead and do the same. Try to paint light to dark so that if there are any mistakes, you are able to use the dark to cover it up. It's going to just simplify your life and to reduce the amount of errors because mistakes will happen even as we're fixing this and it's totally okay. We just need to be prepared and take some steps to make our lives easier. You want to use whatever brushes you feel the most comfortable with. Remember, you're trying to fix things, so don't get too caught up on experimenting unless you're comfortable with this new version also coming out not the way that you want it to, which is perfectly okay. Like when you're starting out as an artist and you're trying to discover your style, discover what you like or don't like, it's okay to experiment and to have 
a whole stack of paintings that you're just not into but for every single one you're going to keep on learning about different things that you do like so don't give up on it you can choose whether you want to fight the colors or switch it up to something different even though it was yellow before what i'll end up doing is that i will add oranges or reds on top so colors that complement my base so that if anything shines through it'll still look appropriate and it'll still look okay and if you slip up and go into another section figure out what else you could do right so i messed up and i went over <laughs> to the next box so i just filled it in and we're just going to pretend that it was intended to be now this section here is why i ended up ha doing the hashing on the tail because see how it's very easy to mix up what section should have been pink versus not because i moved it and you're gonna have areas where it's going to be exactly the same so just be very careful and pay attention to every single brush stroke that you're making as you're looking at what type of mistakes you made and how you're going to fix them don't forget to also look at your brushes so you'll notice that for my painting i continue to use this small flat brush which is a number six because it's easier for the straight edges that i'm using think of am i making circles am i making curves and if you are this rounder brush might be better if you just have a lot of small details the detailing brush will be better the size of the actual brush itself is going to vary depending on what type of painting you're doing and how big it is have a base color and you're okay with the way that it looks go ahead and use the same type of shades because it's going to make it easier to layer on so like in this section i had that pink at the base and because now i'm adding a red you can't even see it and that's the type of effect that you want to continue having to make the most easiest transition to your new creation really encourage you to push out of the tube if you're able to if you don't need as much paint just because it's going to help you save materials over time After, as you're fixing it, if you don't like it the way that a color is coming out, it's okay to choose another one and then paint right over it, so long as the other one is dry, so that you don't end up making the color different. 
but like this one i just mix this green which is way more vibrant than the original that i had used which was the viridian green so i'm taking advantage of it and then just doing a very light layer over that darker green just to give it some life so you can still tell where i had painted the darker color but now you also see that brightness come through. All right, so I finished painting the backgrounds. I actually like the way that it looks so far. And what I'm going to do next, I'm actually going to try to create these lines and these divisions that you can clearly see that are pencil. I'm going to do them in that metallic color so that they stand out. Because I'm trying to conceal the lines, I'm using a, a more wet brush than I have been using. So you'll notice that I dabble way more paint on my brush than I did previously to make sure that it'll be more of a higher surface from this copper than it is from the line. So this line will stand out more. So even though the color is lighter than our pencil, we'll still be able to have the effect that we want it to have, which is for the pencil to not be seen. It's almost like a, a visual mind trick for whoever is looking at this. So be creative. It's okay to conceal your mistakes gives you the freedom to do that all right now that i finished adding all of the little details of the copper you can see how shiny it looks now we're gonna go ahead and add the black as i'm painting the cat i decided to do the whiskers first because i wanted to be able to put a paint on the cat and then be able to control how much paint my brush had. That way I didn't have to worry about paint clumping because I had so much black paint added up on the cat itself. I love how vibrant and how colorful and just the shine that this painting came out with. It looks, it looks just so much different from the beginning. So hopefully as you are remaking your own ugly painting, it also comes out beautiful. And just remember, you're trying to practice, you're trying to make things better. Any improvement you make will make a difference. So just keep trying. Painting takes a while to get used to. Keep on trying different brushes, different paints, different combinations, and eventually you'll get to it. And if you wanna practice some more, I have this video right here on how to paint paw prints using acrylics. So you can watch that one for some extra inspiration and some ideas on how to bake better edges when you are making things that look so fragmented.